Hey everyone, this is Miklos Savidis and I'm going to be going through my weekly trading roadmap for the week starting the 11th of May 2015. So as always, I'll be going through some of the main event driven risks uh, that we'll be seeing in the week ahead and how we can possibly profit from them given the certain uh, or given market structures that we have at the minute. So, before I start off um, with Monday. Over the weekend, uh, specifically today on Sunday, as I'm recording this on Sunday, uh, China cut its rates by 25 basis points to 5.1%, um, which, which is a very, very interesting and thought-provoking um, event. Now, it seems recently that China has been actually acting uh, when the markets are closed on the weekend, they seem to be very, very active, cutting their triple R's um, and now uh, cutting their rates on a Sunday again. So what's interesting about that, at least, okay, obviously it would be nice if it came out where the market was open. You could hit that kind of event and possibly make money from it. But also as it's coming out of the weekend, you can actually sit back and put a plan together of how you might trade this. Um, so, uh, obviously, coming into Monday, you want to be looking at uh, predominantly your Asian equities. So, you'll be looking at your Hang Seng, your Shanghai Composites, your Nikkei's, um, uh, the Aussie dollar, which should probably gain from this, and uh, copper should probably gain, gain from this. Um, and uh, I'm thinking also the S&P 500 futures. Uh, could gain from this. Uh, the only the only caveat to that is uh, from from what I'm hearing from some of the other uh, traders like Wackass and Dimitri that they came in and trade tried to trade the last triple R cut, but S and P just didn't really move um, on the Sunday, so probably just be a bit wary of that. Um, but in any case, let's see how we might actually trade that going forward. So before I get to the, mar the actual market structure, I'm gonna go through just a couple of the events that we have on Monday. Um, so we've got the BOE rate decision. There's no particular expectations for that. We've also got the ECB's Nowotny, the Leaning Hawk, and on the geopolitical side, we've got the Eurogroup meeting, uh, which obviously the Greek situation is going to be pretty much at the forefront of the talks. So let's take a quick look at some of the market structures. If we take a look at this Eurostox 50, now what's really, really interesting and quite intriguing for me, um, after the NFP number, we seem to have had an excessively rapid move to the upside in the equities. Now, I couldn't quite pinpoint, and I think a lot of the traders in the office couldn't quite pinpoint why the move was so incredibly aggressive uh, to the upside. It wasn't like we took out uh, any major, major pinpoints in the market. Um, but nevertheless, we did have some pretty aggressive moves to the upside after the NFP number. And alas, we have had this Chinese rate cut. Now, I, I don't mean to be a conspiracy theorist or anything, but usually um, the market does tend to reflect events before they take place. So whether there was something on the horizon, whether there was uh, market participants waiting for the NFP to get out the way, because we have had some pretty bad Chinese data recently. Um, and the more and more bad data we're getting, you know, we had some some lackluster CPIs, we had some bad trade data as well this week out of China, you know, that's going to be affecting the GDP target, uh, which they want to be keeping above 7%. Now they're sitting at 7% flat. So it, obviously we've had this big move already, but I would expect, obviously, if the S&P futures do rally um, overnight, we could be, we could possibly be gapping into territory where we could see, at least on the open, maybe a few stops. Now, it depends where exactly we open, but for me, if we do open anything higher above into this this triangular formation in here, if we open anything back inside this area, especially this within this key area, I would expect a few stops po possibly to go off um, or some people trying to buy it up in the morning quickly in the futures open. So that's kind of a, a small hypothesis that I have. I might be playing for that. It's going to really depend on where we open. Um, but th that's, that's going to be a very quick trade I'll probably be looking for 
um, on the open. Now, if we get back inside this structure here and hold above this neckline, which we've had this bit of a head and shoulders formation, if we hold above this um, and some of these shorts that have been actively shorting within this area start having to cover, I would expect this to eventually rotate and touch the other side of this, this trend line resistance. Uh, that would take us basically through the bulk of this value area to the upside. Now, I haven't put the market profile structure up because it seems the market profiles recently have been quite long, uh, quite elongated, uh, so it's a little bit difficult for me to show you on the CQG, but I'll pull that up for you guys real quickly here uh, so you guys can take a look. Now, the key areas that I'm going to be looking at, obviously, we closed um, the week just above these key 05s, 06s that have been quite crucial uh, over the past couple of weeks, few weeks, in fact. Now, if we do, you know, start gapping and making our way back into this area, remember we are in this week's, this week's here, that, that week's value area. Now, uh, there's a hypothesis, obviously, that we start making our way to the upside under that scenario. I'll be looking to see what kind of reaction we get around these 59s, just a small reaction because it's the value area high. And it seems as if it's pretty much one of the higher TPO counts of that week. But from the perspective and this hypothesis that we've been looking at again and again with these big volume and, uh, and time value caves, what's, what's really happening is when we're filling these caves out, because we've got a cave pretty much from around these, you know, 35, 60s areas all the way up to these, you know, a point higher at these 60s area. What we've been seeing is if we do actually test this to the upside, it doesn't necessarily stop around here, even though it does the bulk of its volume and time value in here. It does actually stall at the other side of this uh, bell-shaped value area. Uh, so it tends to stop where we get a drop-off in TPOs and a drop-off in vo uh, volume. And that does seem to be occurring between 77s and 85s. If you guys remember... Back when we were trading this week, that was that key um, value area low for this week. And also, um, we did stall a few times at these 85s. It seemed like a pretty key area. So, for me, if we get, if we do get above here, possibly start trading above these 59s, I'll be looking for this move to possibly get exhausted between 77s and 85s. But ultimately wherever it touches that uh, trend line resistance, which could even come in the, the early 90s. Uh, but it, uh, nevertheless, um, you know, ultimately, if you're taking that trade on, you don't want it to, s you don't really want to see it get above these 94s, which is that weekly um, high in here. So realistically, this is the kind of scenario I'm looking, li looking at if we do get up into these areas. Conversely, um, if we do start making our way to the downside, I think there's also pretty good buying opportunities just because, you know, as we've seen before with these caves, it tends to hold where, um, you know, where we have the, the you know, the, the higher volume area, a higher volume notice tends to hold above there uh, and then rotate back inside. So if it does want to trade within this cave, um, I'd expect it to firmly hold above these 61s, which... It seems like it's a pretty high volume area. Six, well, these 60s area, really. Um, but ultimately, it should effectively be trading above this weekly value area high at 64. So I think this area is pretty key. We've got this pretty low volume area in here. That last uh, two weeks ago's highest volume traded here uh, at 61. So between 61 and 64, I think I'm looking uh, to be a buyer. Um, just to play for that hypothesis. If that fails, obviously, that's a different scenario altogether. If we fail here and I see good volume to the downside and we come and test this back up, can't breach above it, then I'm looking possibly for a rotation back down. Now, obviously, um, as an intraday trader, I'm allowed to do you know, a couple of these switcheroos, as many as I want, really. It's all it's all given how many hypotheses and scenarios I, I have for the day or for the week. So ultimately, I mean, I don't expect all this, all of these to take place in one day. Um, but on first touch, I would expect at least a little bit of uh, buying activity around these 60s areas. Uh, so that's as, you know, just to give you guys a bit of a bearing of what I'm looking at on the week. Um, 
that's kind of what I'm I'm bearing in mind. Obviously, if we do start offering back into this value area, you know, that basically means if we take a look. I mean, I'll I'll show you guys back on the on the candlestick chart again. But you know, effectively, we're not holding above these highs uh, or able to to start creating value up in here. That's a pretty big rejection. I'd expect possibly for this to go to the downside pretty quickly, um, and you know, test that other side of the value which comes in at about 3462s. So that's basically an overall hypothesis that I have on the euro stocks for the week. Um, if we take a look real quick at the Bund, take a look quick at the Bund, which is a very, very interesting market recently. Uh, so this is the Bund daily candlestick chart. So Obviously, we've had an incredible move from the recent swing or the recent all-time highs at 160.69s. We've got all the way down to 151.44s, which uh, you know, it's it, it's a pretty incredible move. Um, we're, you know, we're talking more than nine points, almost. You know, nine points is just an incredible, incredible move. Nine and a quarter points. So whatever the case is now. What we've seen off of this area at fifth at 44s has been a very, very big rejection. Um, obviously, the context in the long term is still bullish. The medium term context, I think, for me right now, is going to be a little bit. Um, I mean, it's going to be slightly slanted to the bear side because I think if we do get back into these areas, we could see at least a bit of you know some selling back you know back into these areas uh, but very in the very very short term uh, I think the short term matches my more long-term view which is a little bit uh, bullish obviously that is um, that does that will definitely hold if we get above these 96s because if you take a look at this fib uh, that you know I've drawn in here the 38.2 percent is at these 96s these 54 96s 97s uh, we came into that area that's basically we've got a double top high on the days in here uh, and above that really there's so little volume traded between these 96s all the way up to these 82s double O's area now what I really really do like is if we do start making our way above these 96s I expect for there to be a little bit of flow I don't expect it to stop um, you know I don't expect it to stop really with any sort of conviction um, in this very, very light, lightly traded area. Uh, but I do think there's scope for maybe some shorts if we get up to these, between these 82s, double O's, and ultimately the 50% uh, that comes in at 07s, so 156.07s, which is interesting because we've had this big block of traded area, uh, this box, this price base in here. If we get back up to that price base, I'd expect that to hold a little bit in the medium term. So I think that area does interest me quite a bit. Um, but ultimately, you know, through this this vacuum area, there's very very few levels that I think I'd play as you know very short term um, scalps uh, to the downside. Ultimately, I think the main areas would be above here. But that is if we do get above these 96s. Now, if we don't get above these 90, 96s. Um, the key area to be looking at is below these 5370s, and that swing low here uh, is just below. I've got to check my chart again, but uh, it's just below there uh, in the 60s in the 60s region. If we do start swinging below here, um, you know we could start making our way and filling a bit of this this area. That could be a bit dangerous for the recent uh, bulls that have been buying this market up, uh, but. Let's take a look at how this looks like on a market market profile to see how we might be trading this. Now, obviously on the candlestick chart we've got one, um, you know, one set of hypotheses. Uh, what's interesting is we've done, obviously, if you take a look, a very, very we've left a lot of um, just openly, tra <laughs> just very, very little traded around around these areas just a, it was obviously a very very quick move to the downside a huge buying tail 
and it's just tapered off in TPOs all the way to the bottom and the majority of our TPOs and value is up here so from the market profile structure it does look at least medium term quite bullish now if you take a look we've got between here um, and at least until here we've got a bit of a cave now I wouldn't compare the, the value here with the amount of value we've built in here so uh, it's quite dangerous to be looking I think uh, for the cell on this side um, you know of this cave but then again just keep that in mind you know we do have a few little areas um, we've got obviously these single print fills at 35 36s 42's got a nice little swing low in there um, and just on the other side of this we've got these 60's now if you do take this starting from around these 42's all the way up into this area the 42's on that side so you know it's a good point you know point worth of a uh, of value if that's an elongated value area well then possibly there could be a hypothesis for it to stop around here not willing to get back into that value and then rotate lower uh, possibly filling this area out but for me this these single prints just do not look safe to me it just they just don't look right I don't look safe uh, I don't look like an area I really um, want to be doing too much activity in but nevertheless we do have a, a value area high at these 21s and also 21 22s it's pretty much the lowest traded volume for all of these single prints so I don't know it, it's it's a tough one I, it's a bit of conflicting it's a gray area and I don't really like gray areas I'm I don't think I'm gonna lean on this value area too much um, next week uh, but it is there. I'm going to keep it in mind. I'm not going to be leaning on it too much. I won't be trading off of it, uh, uh, you know, per se. But do mind, do you bear in mind, we have this big cave from uh, basically the cave starts tapering off aggressively from these 82s uh, all the way up until this area here on these 53, 54s. Now, if we st if we do hold above the weekly um, BPOC, which is around 154.69, there could be scope. I think for this to start filling that in now with reference to um, with reference to the Chinese rate cut coming in tomorrow I think it's gonna be quite a difficult one you know when central banks cut rates obviously it could be short-term um, uh, bullish for the bun but I do think that 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 that'll wear off really really quickly just because if we do start getting a really strong move um, along the risk markets you know the bund I think might start finding a bit of an offer on that uh, obviously given the technical structure again that that does that does conflict with it so uh, I, I think trading the bund fundamentally off the Chinese rate cut could be a bit of gray area I'm not going to be looking to taking any views on that I'll be trading the bund purely from a technical perspective because I think it's just a little bit too gray for me um, so that is how at least in the short term We've got the market profile shaping up. Uh, the next real weekly value area comes in a hell of a lot higher at 157.32s, uh, as you can see in there. Um, and really, and really, we are, um, you know, a hell of a lot lower than where we started. So there could be scope for this market to start making a way slowly to the upside, filling in and finding a bit of value before possibly we make uh, another move to the downside you know uh, we have had a l you know the move down had a lot of volume that could be indicated indicative to possible a possible um, I wouldn't say change in trend because you don't just change trends on the flip of a dime but it could be the start of some sort of correction uh, the correction doesn't mean that w the high that we've made recently is the all-time high but it could be part of a topping structure um, so just bear that in mind obviously so, moving on to Tuesday, we've got the UK industrial production and the UK manufacturing production. Pretty, you know, there's not that much going on on Tuesday. Uh, central bank policy, we've got the Fed's William, which is a voter, and a leaning dove speaking um, at the Association for Business Economics in New York. And from a geopolitical standpoint, we've got the ECOFIN meeting uh, in Brussels, also on Tuesday. Wednesday seems like there's a little bit more going on with the German GDP and German CPIs. Uh, the, G the GDP is actually preliminary, so probably more market moving than the final readings on the CPI. Um, we've got also the UK jobs numbers, the ILO unemployment rate, 
and the average weekly earnings. So that could be quite um, that could be quite important uh, going forward. European GDP advanced. The U.S. retail sales, which I believe um, are going to be very very crucial. Um, you know, if you're looking at the U.S. monetary policy at the minute, um, obviously with the U.S. being a mostly consumer-driven economy, uh, it makes up a large part of their GDP. Um, so this number is going to be really quite crucial. If we start seeing a bit of a pickup in this number, uh, we've had a lot of bad numbers recently out of the U.S., but if this uh, holds its ground, then possibly we could see uh, some of those um, rate rise expectations being built back in again because we've seen like a you know a couple of those uh, rate rise expectations just back off a little bit market seems to be pricing a little bit more of a well not a little bit but a lot more of a dovish um, outlook with the first rate rise I believe in late 2015 early 2016 so those are got the DOE US crude oil inventories as e as we do every Wednesday and then the, from a central bank policy perspective, we've got the BOE quarterly inflation report. Now, obviously, we've had the elections. Uh, in the run-up to the elections, the BOE's been very, very quiet. Uh, so we're waiting to see how the BOE might or how it will break its silence. Um, with regards to some of the data points, now, you do have to bear in mind um, the UK inflation is basically at 0%. It's at its lowest point for 15 years. Uh, you know, since 2000, 1999, 2000, when we saw inflation uh, in the UK at about 0.5%. Now we're basically, you know, what seems like a, a, a low in inflation for many, many, many years. I do not see or foresee the BOE throwing any sort of hawkish tones at the minute. Um, but then again, always keep your, your ears to the ground because if they do throw any sort of hints in there, uh, of something hawkish that could be extremely market moving um, uh, just because the market's just not expecting anything at the minute so do obviously keep an eye on this event uh, I'm, I'm not personally preparing for it I haven't even uh, I'm not really going to be taking a look at it uh, too much but I will be sitting at my desk listening in uh, to see if there is anything out of the BOE for this so from a market structure perspective we've got WTI crude oil, which I go through for Wednesdays, because we have the inventory numbers. Um, interesting market. I, th I really do. F I do really do feel that this market has kind of been playing in, uh, and I've I've um, I wrote a little piece on this in my trade of news trade of views last week, and I went through a little bit on my weekly market wrap as well. So you can take a look at the video and and the analysis did on Futex Live. Um, but I really do believe that there could be a correlation. Uh, between crude oil obviously moving to the upside obviously it's had almost a 50 percent move to the upside since that swing low at 42 bucks you know we traded recently around you know the 62 and a half handle uh, you know this this has moved fairly quickly to the upside i do think this could have an effect on the overall medium term inflation expectations um even though the central banks weren't really looking at it on the way to the downside um, they, you know, say it, was, it wasn't really having any effect on on the core CPI, uh, and they were thinking it was partly transitory. But if, eventually, we did see a move down um, in inflation, and now we're seeing uh, we're seeing WTI crude oil move a lot higher. Uh, so possibly that could be one of uh, the reasons why we've seen the five-year five-year infl inflation uh, swaps move to the upside together with crude oil possibly the bund had to have a bit of correction just because um, both those markets are finding a bit of a bid now uh, so i'm looking at this market for any you know i'm not looking on a tick for tick basis um, for the bund with the bund but if um, if this market continues to the upside strongly takes out these highs in here and starts breaking above these 63 bucks you know i'm not really going to be looking um, aggressively for lo longs in the Bund, I might actually start uh, looking for some short entries if, if I get some good prices. Um, but as it stands from a market structure perspective, obviously we've broken that that um, that pretty key trend line that's held us basically from the lows. Many, many times we've touched this. We broke it recently, but we haven't quite 
been able to close below these 58.42s, which you can see the couple of swing highs here. We had some swing highs about 50 to 59 dollars at swing high at 58.42, and then a couple of swing lows just around that region. So if if we start building a base above these 58.42s, we can't quite close below it. I'm looking for this uh, possibly to rotate back up, test. You know, these 63.72 just looks like the real key resistance here, that major swing low. Um, uh, also, mind you, I've been talking about this for a while. We've got this uh, pretty big inverse head and shoulders. So this is your uh, left shoulder. This is your head in here. And this is your right shoulder, which we broke the neckline here. The target of that comes in around 60, uh, 67, 68 bucks. Um, more or less around that. Obviously on these really big formations you'd expect at least 75 percent of that target to come into place. Uh, so that'll put us you know probably just above these 64s ish. So uh, just bear that in mind you know it has been quite a straight line all the way up um, um, and this is you know at the end of the day the major major level for us to hold that that bullish tone is these 5424s you can see major swing lows major swing high swing high swing high swing high swing high if we can hold above that that's looking uh obviously quite bullish still so next market to just keep your eye on is the um S&P 500 we're making our way back to those all-time swing highs um which we posted basically at these 21 uh 20s or just short of that now the key area for me really is these um you know 21 15s it seems like just you know that level we just can't seem to close above that level you know we've come you know within this region within this five handle region we've come ab about uh, 10 times we've come uh, nine or ten times and we can't seem to close above there so for me the first close above these areas or really above that all-time high is going to give us the impetus uh, to start exploring higher now if in the scenario we get back up here and we can't close above you know we possibly leave a swing rebound or any sort of indication that we can't close and there's a weak structure below these 15s um, I personally think we can make a quick move back down again. Uh, it, it just seems this level is just holding us time and time and time again. It really need to close above it. If we can't get it, I do think you know, this market could be um, in, in trouble at least to this area. Obviously, if we break below here, uh, below these 6450s, um, below that swing low, just uh, I think that was 59.58s. Uh, but ultimately, the major, major, major level is the 3325s. The double low right in here, I think below here we could see a really rapid move, you know, even through those 2000s. So just bear that in mind. This is the current structure in the S&P. Um, for Wednesday, possibly, we've got the retail sales. It could be a nice little uh, market mover to unleash uh, some bedlam. So Thursday, we've got... Just the U.S. initial job claims. Nothing really else on Thursday. But mind you, Thursday we do get, um, you know, I've seen from my experience at least, Thursday is the most market moving day of the week. So just because there's only one data point, not that many event-driven risks, don't think that it's a day just to, you know, take it lightly and sit back and relax. You know, Thursdays the markets do move. So pay attention. Friday, we've got U.S. Em Empire Manufacturing, U.S. Industrial Production, and the U.S. University of Michigan Consumer Confidence, which is a preliminary number. Uh, from a central bank policy perspective, we've got the BOJ's Kuroda speaking in Tokyo. Uh, so watch out for any comments from Mr. Kuroda. Um, and we also have the equity options expiry, as we all love to trade. Uh, for FTSE, Eurostock, DAX, S&P, Dow, NASDAQ, and the CAC 40. So, um, I haven't put in that market structure uh, for this. That shouldn't be there. But in any case, that is pretty much the weekly um, event-driven risk for this week. So, if we take a quick look at the risk and money management plan, or at least my risk and money management plan, uh, for this week, I'm looking to put the majority of my chips um, on Wednesday uh, because we've got the most event-driven risks. Uh, even though we, like I said before, we've got pretty much no venture risks with low relevance, I'm still putting a bit of um, 
risk allocation. We saw Thursday was the most volatile day, uh, at least for the Bund. Um, so I'm definitely keeping an eye out on that day. Um, and then a few ch few more chips on Tuesday, just because there's you know not much coming out on Tuesday. Tomorrow, though, I do think it could be interesting just because of the news of the China. Uh, so definitely, definitely, um, you know, be at your desk early in the morning, be prepared, uh, and be passionate for the rest of the week and the coming months ahead. There is a lot of market volatility. There's, you know, there's money on the table. There's careers to be made. Be ready. Be prepared. Um, uh, and do every, everything in your power to stick to your plans. Uh, at the end of the day, there's going to be a lot of flashing lights. There's going to be a lot of, you know, um, uh, casino lights that you want to take part in. Don't make this a gambling sport. You know, you have to be prepared and make this a business. You're coming in to leave with more money than you came in with. Uh, that should be your goal, at least um, in the near term, if you're building an account as a younger trader. So, thank you very much. That was my weekly trading roadmap. I'll be speaking to you guys again on Friday for the weekly market wrap. I hope you guys have a great one. Good luck and uh, all the best trading. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.